Hello, this is Dr. Loach from humanbodyhelp.com and today I'm looking at a spinal cord model. This is a trans section of the spinal cord in a cervical vertebra. Okay, so we're looking at what the spinal cord looks like in the cervical spine. Now this would be posterior where the spinous process is and this would be anterior. Okay. Some of the structures we can see on this model, this is the spinal cord, this is gray matter here, and this is white matter here. Okay. Gray matter contains unmyelinated parts of neurons, whereas the white matter contains myelinated parts of neurons. The myelin is a fatty substance that would help to transmit electrical impulses faster in the nervous system. We have a posterior horn, a lateral horn, and an anterior horn on both sides. Okay. We have this connecting structure, this bridge right here that connects both sides of gray matter. This connecting bridge is called the gray commissure. In the center of that gray commissure, we have the central canal of the spinal cord. This would be the posterior median sulcus, and this right here would be the anterior median fissure. Okay. It's called a fissure because it's wider than this sulcus here. Now this posterior median sulcus separates these two clumps of white matter, which would be the posterior column. The anterior columns would be in the front, and the lateral columns would be on the side. This white layer right here, this white layer right there is the pia matter. Okay, the pia matter is like skin for the spinal cord, and it's continuous with the pia matter in the brain as well. Okay. Out here, we have the dura mater. Okay. Dura mater literally means tough mother. Okay. And this is a very tough, fibrous outer membrane here to protect the structures underneath. In between the dura mater and the pia mater would be the arachnoid mater. Okay. Now on the outside of the dural sheath, we can see adipose tissue right here. Okay. This is epidural fat in the epidural space. And we can see a venous plexus located in this epidural space. You can inject medication into these veins here that make up this venous plexus so that you can anesthetize a patient from this level downward like you would in childbirth if you were to give someone an epidural. This gray structure right here is the ligamentum flavum. Okay. Ligamentum flavum is going to connect the lamina and help to contain this area. This gray structure right here is the posterior longitudinal ligament. And that posterior longitudinal ligament is going to run up and down through the vertebral column, connecting the bodies and the discs of the spinal column. Some other structures we can see here. We have these yellow structures here. Those are going to be nerve fibers. Okay. These Nerve fibers on the posterior aspect would be the dorsal roots or posterior roots of the spinal nerve. And these on the front would be the anterior roots of the spinal nerve. Okay. On this side, if we look at the posterior roots or dorsal roots of the spinal nerve, we can see that they lead to a dorsal root ganglion right here. Now this dorsal root ganglion, located here, is going to contain 
the cell bodies of sensory neurons. This right here is a continuation of the ventral root of the spinal nerve or the anterior root of the spinal nerve. And then we can see the spinal nerve right here before it branches into dorsal ramus to innervate structures in the back and then ventral ramus to innervate structures in the front. We can also see those on this side as well, dorsal ramus and ventral ramus. Now here we have a little branch of the ventral ramus and this branch right here is going to connect to the sympathetic trunk. Here we can see it connecting to a sympathetic ganglion which would be right here. If I were to turn this up, we could see the sympathetic ganglion even better. Okay. This structure right here is called the ramus communicans, the communicating branch. And again, it connects the ventral ramus to the sympathetic trunk. Here we can see the denticulate ligaments here and here. Those denticulate ligaments are extensions of the pia mater which will help to anchor the cord in the vertebral canal so that the cord doesn't move back and forth. At the inferior aspect of the spinal cord we have another extension of the pia mater called the phylum terminale which would tie into the fibers of the sacrococcygeal ligament the ligament that holds the coccyx onto the sacrum. And that phylum terminale would anchor the cord inferiorly so the cord doesn't move upward when we bend over. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.